Hey everybody and welcome back to Beginner's Fab. My name is Eric McGrew, I'm the host of this show. And today we're gonna to be back on the Dahatsu Rocky dealing with the leaf spring conversion. The deal with the, the Rocky is that in my last episode, I had hoped, I had really, really hoped to be able to at least tack up the shackle mount and the pivot mount brackets on the chassis. Well, I didn't get to it, and there's a couple of reasons why, and we're gonna go into those reasons a little bit so you have that in mind. Also, I'm going to show you a little bit about how I made my first uh, spring perk but I'm also gonna show you how I've adjusted my design a little bit based on my needs. Now, I wanna make known to everybody out there that some of this information will be a little confusing if you haven't watched some of the other episodes, and the reason for that is that I'm not doing a typical leaf spring conversion. What I'm doing is I am actually creating a multi-purpose mounting system so that I can run both leaf spring and coil spring suspensions on this same rig. Now, once again, as I've mentioned before, I know it's kind of ridiculous and it's not very necessary. I don't know of anybody who will really need this setup for their vehicle. I'm only doing it because as I have this show, it gives me the opportunity to compare the design, the fabrication, and the function of both systems with the same shock set up on the same exact vehicle and then compare them in ease and how complex they are to design, to install, to fabricate up the components and how well they work. Now, each vehicle is different, we all know that. So the ideas, the concepts that I'm showing in this, as I go along and as I learn, I'm sure will be applicable to what you're doing. The only thing that will change are slight measurements and that kind of stuff based on the kind of springs you're using or based on the um, width of your axle and that kind of stuff, okay? So just I'm just throwing that out there up front so you guys know what I'm doing and why this is a little bit different. Now, I've had some problems with my 3 8 material that I bought. I just can't, for the life of me, seem to be able to perforate all the way through the material with the drill and the bits that I have. Well, I couldn't figure out why, and then I started talking to a friend, and he started looking at it, and we started doing some um, just not very scientific, but some hardness testing by by using pressure and that kind of stuff to, to puncture the, the metal and cut and that kind of stuff. And what it comes out to is that I bought some 3 8 material in plate form off of the area of the metal shop where they do the, the CNC oxacetylene cutting, right? So they have that little um, motor in the head that move around with the oxacetylene torch and it cuts specific shapes and designs and stuff. When they have extra material left over, they throw it off to the side and you can pick up scrap pieces instead of having to buy whole sheets. So that's what I did. Well, seems it seems that I had accidentally purchased some 3-8 tooling material, which is a very hard steel. And the the drill bits that I have, just even trying to keep them at a slow speed and, and using um, a an lubricant, a light oil as a lubricant, is not working. It, I just can't get through them all the way. The, the bits dull out before they get through and all that kind of stuff. So I couldn't even get the pilot bit of my hole saw to go all the way through to cut the two and a half inch diameter radi um, curve that I needed for the axle placement um, brackets on the spring perches. So the only other alternative I really had was to do it through an angle grinder and do a little bit of cutting and grinding out, which took me a lot longer than I had planned on and therefore I was not able to get that stuff finished up to get it tacked up on the chassis. Plus, I ran into another problem. On the truck, I have a situation where the chassis rail in the rear 
where I'm going to be mounting my shackle mount is really close to the gas tank. As you can see, just in front of where this is right here, this um, piece that I'm still grinding down, which is where the tow hook was, and that took me a long, lot longer than I thought to cut off too. So um, I, I, I just got really delayed, but you can see that the chassis rail is really, really close there to the gas tank. And the shackle mount is sitting that far back. It's touching the beginning of this pad right there. If you guys can see that, yeah, right there. So I don't feel real comfortable welding because the actual shackle mount fills up the whole width of this chassis rail right there. And so now before I start welding all this stuff on in the rear, I'm gonna have to drop the tank. So that's just one more thing that I ran into that has delayed my progress. I will be getting it done, but those are a couple of the facets that I've run into. And just so you have an idea, this here is the tow hook that I had to cut off the other side. It's the exact same thing. It's um, it's just really beefy and they have it on there really well and all that, but I have to cut it off because the um, the actual leaf spring when it flattens out will actually hit that in compression if I don't take it off. So I have to cut those off. So there's a little bit about how this is all kind of working out at the moment and why it's been a little bit delayed for what I've planned on doing. Now, that's not stopping me from working on this. But it just means that there's a couple more steps and stuff involved and all that kind of stuff. But now what I'm gonna do is actually show you guys how it is that I'm actually making the radiuses for the spring perches. And I'm also gonna show you what I've decided to do on the spring perches themselves. To start off with my leaf spring purchase, the first thing I had to do was measure out the size that I wanted. Well, that's pretty easy. The width of the actual leaf spring by around four and a half inches, five inches, depending on how long you want the support to be off, overhang forward and backward on the axle. Most of the spring purchase that I've seen online are around that four and a half, five inches in, in length. And then the width is usually the width of the leaf spring, which is around two and a half inches approximately. That can change based on the actual leaf springs that you're using. Now, what really comes more tricky in, or comes into play that's a little bit more tricky is actually the radius of the um, axle itself. Well, my axle tubing is two and a half inches in diameter. And so I knew that that was the radius that I needed um, to match that. Now, you what you do have to remember is that if you make the uh, support too tall, you can't follow that radius all the way around because remember it starts to close again on the bottom side. I, I wanted a 3 8 inch rise over the axle, I guess you could say. So I went ahead and did the following. Here you'll see that I have the 3 8 inch rise. So if I put it on 3 8 inch, you can see that it matches. So there's a 3 8 inch rise that I wanted from the radius to where the bottom of the actual spring plate is, so it'll give me a gap above the axle 3 eighths of an inch. Now, I knew that this needed to be two and a half inches, which this one is. It's outside to outside, like so. So that's two and a half inches. So what I did was I went and I um, or a two and a half inch diameter tubing. So I went to one and a quarter inch and I put the point right there on the top of the three eighths inch rise because I know I didn't want it any higher than that. And then I actually drew out. You have to make sure you keep that point good. So make sure that you keep it down and you keep pressure on it. And you see there, you can actually follow it just like so. And that gives you that point, that line that you need to follow. Now, I just did that quick, but I know that my original one needs to go on the outside of the, the pink there. So what I'll do is I'll actually grind this out until that pink is no longer there and I know I'm good. And that will give me the setup that I need, which will show, which will look just like this in the end. And that'll give me the radius I need to be able to sit on top of the axle itself. But now I've got to actually 
work on getting this cut out and ground out, which is the longest process. Here you can see me working on putting together, or actually forming out these arches for the uh, spring perch uh, radiuses that go over the top of the axle or the bottom of the axle. You can also see that I have the original idea of the spring perch sitting there on the table that is floating around a little bit. The, the truth of it is is that the way I'm doing it here with the vice grips, if you have to do it by hand, is probably one of the safest ways still. I have had a number of people tell me that holding the plate with my fingers and cutting it in half wasn't a good idea, and they have a good point, so be very careful when you do that. Use a vise if you can or whatnot, but just be, be very, very cautious. I, I really like to do the vice grips and stuff. Um, another thing here is just to remember to take your time and do it. This is all in uh, time lapse, of course, and you know I'll, I'll show you a little bit of the finished product right now.